Alright guys, I got another package here from Stone Age Gamer. If you've read the title and you know what this is, then uh, you know what you're in for. Otherwise, you're going to see something pretty cool here. As we can see here, this is packaged using blast processing. That's always good to know. So let's open this up, shall we? What the heck is this? Oh, cool. He's acknowledging my YouTube channel. We have refunded you $20 on your EverDrive purchase, and we have also included a Genesis shell that has already had the label. That's awesome. I had, I had no idea. I've ordered a few things from Stone Age Gamer, and uh, it looks like he's, uh, you know, thanking me for that, and Stone Age Gamer, awesome website. And as we can see, I think he's a pretty awesome guy to deal with. So, um, Like I said, some of you know what this is. Some of you don't. Some of you are going to find out anyways. Now, <clears throat> to most people, what this looks like is uh, a boring little circuit board. But in reality, what this is, well, it's pretty much the coolest thing invented this decade. Basically, this is a flash cart for the Sega Genesis. Uh, this is actually made by a guy in the Ukraine. And, uh, you know, he basically made this all, all by himself, I mean, to design the hardware and, um, you know, to design the hardware and, and the software and program everything and make this thing do what it does we have to give this guy serious credit. Obviously, a, a Sega Genesis can't run games directly off an SD card. Sega Genesis, you know, was never designed to run games off an SD card. So basically what this guy's done is he's put, uh, I think it's 8 megs of, um, like, standard SD flash memory. When I first saw that, I thought, it's only 8 megabytes. But this is only to store the game that's being played at the time. Obviously, you can only play one game at a time. You know, it has basically a built-in operating system, and all the programming and stuff that has to be built into this is in that. Uh, and it still leaves enough room for any Sega Genesis game ever released. Um, as far as I know, and I'm not, I'm not looking this up right now, to my knowledge, Super Street Fighter II is the biggest Sega Genesis game ever released, and that will work on here. But the cool thing about this is it's not just for Sega Genesis games. Um, this thing will work with Sega Master System games, because like I've mentioned before, the Sega Genesis has all the hardware that a Sega Master System has built in it. It is basically built to be backwards compatible. So you can load basically any Se Sega Master System game on here, um, basically any Sega Genesis game, except for a few that have, uh, you know, like Virtual Racing. We know Virtual Racing has that uh, big SVP Sega Virtual Processor uh, DSP chip on there to to crunch the numbers for the polygons. And obviously they're not going to put that expensive chip to sacrifice a Virtual Racing game just so you can play Virtual Racing, because Virtual Racing was the only game to actually use the SVP chip. Um, so obviously that won't work on here, but I mean, really, other than that, as far as I know, almost every Sega Genesis game will work on here. And then on top of that, 32X. <laughs> Blows my mind that the, that this guy can, you know, develop this, design this, or write all the software that runs this. And uh, I heard about this thing about six months ago for the first time, and... Um, and it was really interesting. There's been a few flashcards for the Genesis in the past, like I said, but none of them were easy to use. None of them, in my opinion, did as much stuff as this one. There's even a pause button on here. This is actually the pause button, because if you remember, the Sega Master System had the pause button on the on the console. You couldn't use the start button on the... There was no start button on the controller. This, I think, is actually cheaper than the previous Genesis flashcards that have come in the past. Um, so, these cost about... Well, this one was $79.99. And like I said, that, that does seem 
a little steep, but it's actually cheaper than any of the others to come. And uh, so that, that's cool. And like I said, six months ago, people started talking about this thing, but at the time, the only way to get it was to actually send like a check or a money order to this guy in the Ukraine, and he would send it to you. Stone Age Gamer, as far as I know, is the only, or at least they're one of very few, um, American distributors for this. So, now that Stone Age Gamer has it, you don't have to send a check or money order to this guy in the Ukraine. Uh, you can just go to Stone Age Gamer and use PayPal. This is not an SDHC device, and obviously it would have been more complicated and cost more to do that. So it works with any SD card up to 2 gigabytes, and, uh, it's kind of funny, when it came out, people were complaining about that, and it's like, you got to remember how how big that is, you know, when we're talking about Sega Genesis games. The average Sega Genesis game is, what, 8 megabits? You know, some were 16 megabits, some were 24, but the average was probably 8. Do you know what 2 gigabytes is in megabits? That's 16,000 megabits. And from what I've been told, you can actually fit every Sega Master System game, Sega Genesis game, and 32X game ever released on a single 2 gig SD card. One last thing I did want to mention is I know a lot of people see this as a means to play pirated games, or... A, an excuse not to buy games anymore. I want to clear one thing up. Am I still going to continue to buy Genesis games if I see Genesis games for a good deal? Yes. Am I still only going to show and review Genesis games that I own the real copy of? Yes. I understand that some people, you know, don't like any sort of means of playing you know, pirated games, even if it is something as old as the Genesis. But there's other uses for this. I mean, think about it. You can play games that never got released. You know, sometimes you find the ROMs for games that never got released. Um, sometimes you can, you can find homebrews. So I think even if you're against the idea of, uh, you know, pirating these games and not you know, owning the real game, I think that you can still see some people would would want to have this for other reasons, you know. Being able to play games that never got released in your area. Some people like to buy Genesis games, but they don't like to pay a lot of money for the really rare games. And I understand that. The only thing that you really have to do is you're going to have to cut out a little slot where the SD card is going to be, and a little hole where this uh, pause button is going to stick up. So as you can imagine, once this is actually in there, you're going to have to have a slot and a, and a hole. So we're going to have to use a Dremel or, or maybe a drill to modify the top of this shell. Uh, and then other than that, you just screw it in. Okay, it may not look like m much, but uh, we were able to use the Dremel tool to cut out shouldn't say Dremel tool, should I? Rotary tool, rotary cutout tool, whatever you want to call it, uh, with a cutoff disc to cut out enough for the slot, and then just mount the board into the um, cartridge casing. Make sure you get it right. Now it does say here back, and on the other side it says front. So you want to make sure you actually put it in the cartridge right. So when you stick it in, it's not actually, you know, the actual circuit board's not in backwards. So that's the only thing you want to check. And other than that, we'll throw it together and it's ready to go.